Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and this episode was filmed primarily at Honeymoon Island State Park in Pinellas County, Florida. You can reach Honeymoon Island State Park by a causeway. It has some beautiful beaches there, but it also has this amazing osprey nature trail. And sure enough, I was able to observe ospreys on this trail and observe an osprey nest. This episode is going to be all about ospreys and some fascinating facts about their life and their specialized adaptations. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. Ospreys are magnificent soaring raptors that you'll often see near a large body of water. They're so big, they're often mistaken for bald eagles. Their length is up to 24 inches, and they can have a wingspan of up to 6 feet. It has a generally white underside and a brownish upper body. While its head and underside are white, it also has a distinctive black band or mask across its eyes that reach down to both sides of its neck. In flight, the wings kind of have a crooked shape, and they resemble an M when you view them from the ground looking up against the sky. They can be a little bit confusing because seagulls hold their wings in a very similar fashion. Ospreys are one of only seven land-based bird species that are found worldwide. They're found on every continent except Antarctica. Wherever they are found, they're a migratory bird species. In the U.S., the birds will breed and raise offspring in the spring and summer in North America, and then they'll fly to Central America or South America for the winter. It's interesting to note that when they're in South America, they never breed there. They always breed in North America. Florida and some parts of Southern California are unique because sometimes the ospreys don't migrate and will be year-round residents at these southern points. Ospreys are always found near lakes, oceans, river, bays, and estuaries where they do their fish catching. 99 to 100% of their diet is fish. And for this reason, they're often called the river hawks, fish hawks, and even sea hawks. In fact, the Seattle Seahawk football franchise is named after the osprey. The name is connected to indigenous peoples and tribes of Washington State. It's a symbol of messenger and attributes of strength being far-sighted amongst other symbolism. Here on Honeymoon Beach Island, I was able to observe ospreys on the nest. In general, you can distinguish a male from a female when they're on the nest by looking at their chests. Males tend to have a wider chest and less of the brown streaking, and females tend to have more brown streaking on their chests. The males are the nest builders and will build a sort of disorganized assemblage of twigs and sticks and seaweed and mosses. And the female will come to check out this nest. If the female approves of what the male has built, and it's not always adequate, then she'll choose the male and they will work together on the nest. The male continues to bring sticks and twigs and stuff, and the female has more of a role to arrange them to her liking. The nest can be six feet or more in diameter, two or three feet deep, and can weigh hundreds and hundreds of pounds. The pair will bond for life. However, it's interesting, when they migrate, they often go to different places. So in effect, they have separate vacations. They will annually return to the same nest, and the same nest can be used over many generations. So a pair might use a nest for 7 or 10 years, which is their average lifespan. And then other generations will use this nest, continuing to build on it. So the nest can get bigger and bigger with each year new nest material piled on the top. In other places in Pinellas County, Florida, 
I saw ospreys nesting on artificial structures. They will take man-made utility poles. They'll nest on man-made platforms. They show great adaptability to living with and near humans. The female will lay two to four eggs, and most of the sitting on the eggs will be by the female, while the male will hunt and bring her fish, and she might leave the nest for a few short absences. She'll sit on those eggs for 35 to 40 days before they hatch. It's always fascinating to watch ospreys fishing. They have excellent eyesight. They'll hover over the water, they'll hunt over the sea. And here I have some pictures of them hunting near North Myrtle Beach, North Carolina. They'll circle and scan the water with their forward-facing eyes. It's amazing, excellent eyesight. They have that black band across their eyes and their face to reduce glare. And they have a unique ability to hover in place, much like a helicopter, before they dive into the water for prey. In fact, the Bell Boeing B-22 Osprey is used by the Marine Corps, Navy, and the Air Force. And it's named after their osprey because it can fly fast like a plane, but however, it can also hover and land like a helicopter, much like an osprey can hover in place in the air. When ospreys are hunting over open water, they'll spot a fish, they'll hover briefly in place to line up their dive, they'll fold their wings up for speed, and their sharp talons will be outstretched in front of the bird, making for some amazing photographs. It coordinates hitting the water, accounting for the refraction of light, and it can grab a fish that's up to two or three feet under the surface of the water. Ospreys have dense, well-oiled, ultra-water repellent feathers, so it can quickly shed water and pull itself out of the water with powerful wing thrusts, without that water sticking to it and weighing it down. Powerful bird, strong enough to lift both the bird and the prey it just captured up out of the water and get airborne again. Ospreys have so many fascinating adaptations to their specialty of catching fish. They also have an unusual nostril that it can open and close at will. And uh, its eyes are covered with a nictitating membrane, so it's all prepared for hitting that water surface. I think one of the most amazing adaptations of the osprey are their unique feet that are unlike any other bird except perhaps owls. They have the unusual characteristic, instead of having the usual bird foot pattern with three front toes and one rear facing, ospreys can move one to the back so they have two front facing and two back facing talons. This is so much better and effective for gripping a fish. These talons are long and sharp and longer than most raptors, and they have rear facing barbs underneath the surface of their talons that help it hold on to a slippery, wiggling fish. Furthermore, when they fly, using the feet like this, they can firmly grip that fish and hold it horizontally underneath them, often head first. So just as the fish is streamlined in the water, it makes for a streamlined flight to get back to a nest, which could be at some distance. It is such a specialist and such a successful fish hunter. It's just amazing the physical and behavioral adaptations of this bird. Whenever I see ospreys, it's always a breathtaking experience for me, and I just can't take my eyes off them or stop watching them. To me, ospreys represent that wild world so deeply. To me, it's a symbol of recovery and habitat protection, as well as the resilience and adaptability of this species. Whenever I see ospreys, it just makes me really feel nature at its most wild. I hope you enjoyed this episode about ospreys and maybe learned something new or learned to really appreciate them. Remember, if you like my channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and I love hearing from my viewers. Leave me a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. 
I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.